Hello YouTube, Damo underscore 23 here and welcome back to another episode here on the YouTube channel. In today's video, it's the quarterfinal of the Champions League. That is correct, we are three ties away from potentially winning the whole competition and the same being over. We just need to get through a tie in the quarterfinal, home and away, a tie in the semi-final, home and away, and then the Champions League final what i will say in that is we've never made it past the quarter final we have obviously made it to the quarter final on a couple of occasions but this seems to be the big stumbling block as much of a world-class team that we have been we have absolutely cost ourselves against ac milan last season and we got absolutely smacked by barcelona a couple seasons ago hopefully today is different and it all starts with the draw which we're about to get into but with that being said, give the episode a like. Do subscribe to the YouTube channel. It really does help promote the content out. And we have just had youth intake. We have just signed a number of players through the youth intake system, but our youth candidates are as followed. Ben Haywood, who could be as good as Jordan Shaw and has that world-class potential. Bradley Smith, another striker regen that has come through the football club. And Thomas Price as well, who looks pretty damn nutty. On top of that, you've got Rob Watts who looks okay, and Harry Jones, who's waiting on a deal at the moment and has some really good technicals as well. What I'm trying to say is, because we have world-class facilities and we are the best team in Wales, you've got to remember, even though we're in England, it's in Wales, we get all the best Welsh regens. So my youth intake's a stack, but that's because the Wales national team, the Wales youth level, etc., is all determined by basically me and we're the best team in Wales, so we get the best of the bunch, uh, is what I'm trying to say. So we got a big pool. I'm just going to briefly just show you in the 18s now. We've got, what, one, two, three, four guys that have world-class potential. One, two more guys that have good to leading Premier League potential. And all these guys here, if they hit their potential, are good to leading Premier League players too. That's pretty special. Then if you look at the under-21 squad, if you just learned out Joe Victor, as you said, uh, Lesko, who we've already brought in, whatever, has world-class potential. Masri, James Richardson, who came for intake last year. Already looks this good and played for Australia. I'm just saying, you know, you got Zeze who's here. And the biggest one of lot is Ross Davies is yet to play for me. And he's up to three and a half star, nearly world class. And I keep buying right wingers, yet we have a Welsh right winger that I've never played. And his, men his physicals are world class. If this ever turned into a youth only challenge, we would be stacked right now. Anyhow, that's not the hallmark of this save because we could potentially, in three to four episodes' time, be done with the save itself. But without further ado, let's get into the draw. Your teams in the draw are Barcelona, we don't want them. Benfica, we want them. Porto, we want them. Inter, we do not want them. They're very, very good. Liverpool, that will give me nightmares because they knocked me out last season the year before. PSG we definitely do not want, and Real Madrid would be quite difficult. The only good thing is Bayern Munich are no longer here, and they're the team that have been dominant in Europe. So, at least in that regard, even though we beat them already, we don't have to face off against a team that's made four finals out of the last six seasons. First out of the hat is Benfica, a team we really want. Is it Wrexham? It's Porto, and wow, it is a Portuguese derby in the quarterfinal, and that guarantees a Portuguese side in the semi-final of the Champions League. As much as that means it's going to be a more difficult draw for us now in the quarterfinal, if you can somehow draw them as your semi-final opponent, if you make it through the quarters, you basically should be already in the final. Next out of the hat is going to be PSG. I don't particularly want to face Mbappe again. Unfortunately, we have to. It is PSG yet again in the Champions League. And boy, oh boy, that is not good for us. If you have a look at the Champions League competitions, and you go by Champions League, PSG's a side that is not good for us. PSG, we did rotate that day. Mbappe scored a hat-trick who lost 3-1 away. PSG the year before, we did not play. The year before that, we made it to the quarterfinal this stage. PSG beat me at home 2-1 in a game by memory, if it lets me see. No, we were the better side, but it was not this world-class of a team. And then away from home, PSG slapped me at the part of the Prince. And that is not good. The only good thing about this one is, I believe, we are the, uh, we are the away side first. So it'll be coming back to Wales to see how we go. Uh, this is all about drawing Benfica and Porto. Can we please? 
All right, boys, here we go. The whole save could rest on this. The whole save could rest on this seeing PSG and Wrexham. Because all of a sudden, this PSG tie is all of a sudden not just a quarterfinal. It's a basically a final berth. Let's go! Let's go! In before we beat PSG and then lose to Porto or Benfica in the semi. However, 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 all of a sudden, me and PSG look at each other dead in the eye. And we know the winner of this tie is more than likely going to be playing in a Champions League final. Liverpool, Real Madrid into Barcelona on the other side. Obviously, it's not going to be a guaranteed win in the final. But judging on coefficient, squad stature, rankings in world football, how generally Portuguese sides go in the Champions League on Football Manager, they generally don't do amazing. They have one year every once every 20 seasons or so where they, they randomly win one. But that's about it. We really, really, really should look at this draw and go, if we can beat the favourites, they are the favourites. PSG are a side that, you know, have won two of the last three and I think lost the final in here as well. We'll recap that in a second. This is a side that I think we can have a chance against. But more importantly, it's a side that if we beat, we should be in the big dance and in the final at the end of the season. Welcome to the Parc de Prince, a place where we got spanked by Mr. Kylian Mbappe last season in the league phase. But now we face PSG, a much better side, a side that now has a Premier League title and an FA Cup under its boot, and a side that is still undefeated in England. It's going to be a big old tie this against PSG, and they still look insanely good. But if we just filter by Champions League and have a look through the history that they have in the last few seasons, you will see how they have gone. Um, as you can see here, to get here, they went through the league phase, missed out just, drew Man City, who are no mugs, and beat them in a penalty shootout. I actually thought they played Bayern Munich, but apparently they did not. Bayern was knocked out by... Nope, they, uh, Bayern Munich was knocked out by, um, by Manchester City. There you go. So I was close. It was the other way around. Anyhow, that's them. Last year, Champions League winners knocked out Bayern Munich in the semi, who have obviously won it a couple seasons ago and a few seasons before that. And Bayern Munich have been there, thereabouts, basically every season. And they beat Barcelona an extra time in the final. The year before that, Champions League round of 16. The year before that, victorious again. And that was the year that we played them in our first year in the Champions League. And they absolutely spanked us at the Park the Prince. This is a scary one, boys, because they are fantastic. They are, however, missing one very key player, though. Nuno Mendes has done a broken leg, I believe, fractured lower leg, and he is out for this tie and for the season. And that is massive in the context of this. Obviously, the winners play Pianfica and Porto. I do have a little bit of injury news myself, but that is Batista getting a stubbed toe. I've given him an injection. And the main reason why is I am going to play, and this might shock you, the aggressive 4 3 3. Why, you say, David? Why are you being dumb? Why are you going out and trying to go toe to toe against PSG? I think we're better than them. I really, really look at this team and go, you know what? We're better than them. We're better than Bayern. We spanked Bayern this year. 4-1. I think we're the best team in the world. And I think, you know what? We shouldn't shy away from this challenge. I think we go to the Parc de Prince. I think we go to France. We look them in the eye. And we tell them, you know what? We'll go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. We'll score and we will beat you. I will say, if we go one deal up, you'll see me pucker up and go into the inverted wing-back defensive system. But... Anyhow, it is what it is. Batista will not play roaming playmaker. We'll switch him into box-to-box -box straight away. Your team for the quarterfinal of the Champions League. A stage we've never been past. Dominguez is in goals. Robertson, Sayed, Hincape and Lozano is the world-class back four. Koulibaly, club captain, the West with defensive midfielder in the role, is going to have his hands full. In front of him is Desri Du and Batista. Up front is the world-class front three. It is Martin, it's Martins, Herman and Consigli. Mr. Mahmoud Mahmoud has the best average rating in the Champions League. And if you look at the key matchups in the Champions League, if I can find it here, he has got the most he's got the most goals compared out of the two teams, and he's got the biggest 
average rating. With that being said, I'm putting him on the bench to star off the bench, hopefully. With that being said, let's get into this game here. It is going to be tight. It is going to be tense. It's going to be scary. It's going to be fun. It's going to be everything. Let's go and have a look at this PSG side and then let's get into it. And then the second leg is in France. I'm telling you guys right now, we cannot lose by more than two goals. If we lose by one goal or it's a draw or if we win, I back us in with a chance. Your PSG side that we are playing is Donnarumma in net. Jules Kunde is still there, but he's only got 11 pace and 10 acceleration. I have got Herman on that side who is rapid. Please, please can we target him? Please. We got the Bass at centre-back, who still looks pretty good. Robert Balasset is one of the best regens in the save. Um, you got Tommy Ashley out on the other side. So I've got a fullback with 11 pace and 10 acceleration and 9 acceleration and 10 pace. And Martinez has got 18 acceleration and 20 agility. Martins. It could be good. Manuel Ugray is having a fantastic year. We already know that. Manuel Quone at 32 still looks elite. They got Thomas Messina, who's got 27 caps for Argentina and is world class. You got Thomas Le Breton, who's a Frenchman who has not been capped for France. And to be fair, out of everybody in this team, is someone that I'm surprised to see. Kylian Mbappe. I actually had a contract offer accepted for him, and then they triggered a one-year extension, which is unfortunate. Uh, World-class still, 20 finishing. Look at him. He looks fantastic. I really, really wish he wasn't here and playing against me right now. He gives me nightmares. Last time we played, he scored a hat-trick. And then Javier Casado, a man that's worth 263 million, has got so many 15, 16, and 17-plus stats that it makes you scared. And do we bet, do we mention that he's six foot two? This guy is going to be insane. On the bench, they got Bidgelow in as the backup goalkeeper who probably should be playing. Botman was bought here from um, Manchester City. Uh, Kim Min Jae still here at a very old age. Uh, Merritt Arslan's a fantastic regen. Have a look at him. He arguably should be playing. He looks insane. Um, Emery's here still. So yeah, Emery grows into a world-class midfielder every single save. Yeah, this, this is a team. This is a team. You can see why they are... Yeah, he, he's pretty decent too. So you can see why this is a team that has been winning Champions League, can't you? As always, boys, in these big games, never press those wide men, and but obviously, well, never tightly mark those white men so the ball can go out there and you press him. That means Mbappe might get space, but it also means Mbappe shouldn't turn us. Champions League anthem. It's the world's best. Play the team that hunts him to become the best. It's PSG who's been there and done it all versus a Wrexham side who dares to dream to accomplish everything. It's a game worthy of being the final, but it is your quarterfinal first leg. It's going to be PSG in the blue and red and Wrexham in the royal red. And away we go. As I said, I think we need a draw or a win tonight to go through over two legs. But if we only lose by one goal, I will live with it. So far, 15 minutes played, it's been a KG affair. There is not even 0.2 XG out there between the two teams. And these are two teams that are usually free-throwing and attackive and aggressive. So far, if you look at the match momentum, it's been pretty even across the board. And Consigli is injured. A potential foot injury. Somewhere, Paulie is watching, and Mahmoud Mahmoud is coming on. A man that we have not used enough in this save for sure, but a man that my mate Paul says will win me the Champions League in six Champions League games has got eight goals and an average of an eight. On it comes Mahmoud Mahmoud, or Muhammad Muhammad, the heir to the Muhammad Salah throne. Off we go. 35 minutes played, it is nil-nil. Which I find a little bit interesting considering the fact that the lack of pace they have out wide. And we have some very quick players. Half time, it's nil nil. I'm happy with the performance though. I'm not going to get aggressive here. Because to be fair, if this stays nil nil for the full 90, I'm very happy. Even though I haven't set up in the inverted wing back system, I am very happy if this stays nil nil. It's a throw in, and we have the long throws of Robinson. Can we win a flick on here? Robinson. Kulabali. Robinson. 
cuts it. Sayed can't find an opportunity. Hinkampe, Kulabali from distance, hits the bar. And it comes out and doesn't fall to anyone. Herman now, can he find a chance? Lozano whips one back stick, doesn't get headed away. I think that's your highlight. Robertson and Mbappe go after it, and that is the highlight. First highlight, Wrexham came before the 60th minute. Time it ticks away. I'm not going to make too many changes here early. I'm going to make the changes later doors. All right, here we go. We have another long throw here for Robinson. Chucks it in the box. Kulabali flick on. He can't pay Donnarumma. What a save. The long throw nearly worked. The long throw nearly worked. On the reverse camera angle, you'll see it better. Donnarumma at his old age still being able to readjust. What a one to save from the PSG keeper. It is still nil nil. We've had two chances. We've hit the woodwork once. This is kind of what happened in that first game. Ben Dyke's been an amazing form. In he comes. Herman's going to come off here for Junior as well. They've both been in amazing form. That's fine. I think we've had the better of the game. So I'm going to go in a roaming playmaker here. Batista's going to come off for dead airs and off he goes. We're going to leave one last change to time waste late doors if needs be. We're going after it. Late doors, 15 minutes. I want a goal. Herman's ball in. Sayed. Martins. Can he finish? It's blocked. It's going to be another corner. And it's still going to be new and new. We bring on the pace of Doak and Junior. We bring on the pace of Dedez. At a tiring PSG defence. Donnarumma comes and claims he's had a pretty world-class game in net for PSG. And it is nil nil. I'm going to demand a little bit more from the boys here. Syed, Desri Du, Robinson. We have a ball to Doak. Can we rotate out? Can we play backwards? Can we find a second line ball? Sayed, the ball to Lozano, second line is on. Inside of Kulabali, he was fouled. No, he wasn't, says referee. We're good in the counter-pressing situation. We have to be. Now Mbappe he finds... No, oh, Desri Du, what a freak. Hinkampe now. Desri Du. Mohamed Mohamed spins out. Robertson, Doak, numbers queuing. Needs a runner. Doak goes one. Doak beats two. Ben Doak straight at Donnarumma. Wow, what a moment. Coulda, shoulda, wasn't. Look at the high, look at the match stats. We've been so much better this second half. Is there a goal coming for this Wrexham side? We've been utterly, not utterly dominant, but dominant enough. Delhay, Doak wins in the counter press. Dedez on the break, looks for Junior. Kunde does enough. Mbappe, that's not a man you want to say his name of, gets on the ball. Inside ball is poor. Hinkape, Desri do needs a runner. Mohamed Mohamed gets there. Donnarumma, B, goal. Mohamed Mohamed scores. They're checking for offside. I think he's on. Let's go. Flag goes up. No way. No way. He's... Oh, it's just off. <laughs> Unlucky, lads. It's going to finish nil-nil in the first leg. Four shots, two, play 11 shots, seven. We had one XG, and if you look at that game as a whole, we really should have beat them. In saying that, though, I said if we took a draw or a lead to, to Wales and to the Tommy Bamford Park, I really think we could win. I'll tell you what, I think looking at this, we should be favourites to make the semi-final of the Champions League. I'll see you guys in a second. Do not go anywhere. Let's actually go and get through the team talk here. Uh, well done, guys. Just proved a lot of people wrong. Um, let's go through the team talk here. I want to see how big is the injury to Consigli. He's out three to four weeks. I'm going to give Batista another injection, but not play him in the next game with the intention of giving him one more injection for the PSG game. I'll see you guys in a second. Here we are, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. It's the Tommy Bamford Park. It is Wrexham at home, the PSG. It is the second leg of the Champions League quarter final. Since we last met, we played one game in the league. We also played Southampton beforehand. We won 7 3. Uh, but we played one game in the league and it finished 0 0, which is the first time we haven't scored in two consecutive games in a while. Absolutely dominating performance, but uh, it got to a stage that I actually went into the inverted wing back system to hold on for the 0 0 draw. And that is mainly down to the fact that we had, <laughs> we are still. It's only six games away from being invincible. Please note, as always, the last game of the season is away at Anfield, one of the most difficult games of the season. So telling you guys right now, if it gets down to the final 
day of the season for the Invincible season, you will definitely be getting that as a YouTube episode. More important, let's get into PSG, who, by the way, have just gone and lost to FC Nantes. More importantly, ladies and gentlemen, Casado played 90, Messina played 90, Mbappe played and came off the bench, Kunde and Tomiyasu played, who are not naturally quick, and they have come off the bench. Balesti Belsetti, Roberto Belsetti, their best centre back, played a full game. I'm straight away thinking where we fully rotated and they didn't really rotate, I think we might have an advantage with fresh legs. With that being said, Benfica will be the opponent as they beat Porto 8-2 in the first leg. 8-2 beat FC Porto right now. But you never know, they could score six and take it the extra time. Anyhow, let's get into this one here. This is where it matters, boys. This is where it matters. It's the exact same team that got a nil-nil draw by one person up front. And that is Mahmoud Mahmoud, or Mohammed Mohammed, as we affectionately call him. He wanted by Chelsea for the whole last year. As I said, in six Champions League games, make it seven now. He's got eight goals at a 7.81. It was 8.0 before this game. He's usually very consistent and ready to go. Your team for the second leg is Dominguez in goals. Robertson, Sayed, Hincape, and Walter will play out left back. And the other four has changed because of the suspension to Lozano, which is unfortunate. And he's just become world class. So there you go. Um, with that being said, Koulibaly is world class. Desiree Deuce, fantastic. And Batista, yet again, with the injection, will play the box-to-box -box midfielder role. Herman out wide has been a creative force. And for the first time, looks likely he's going to score more than 20 goals in a season. Lewis Martinez on the other side, who in his last five hasn't been as good. But when you look at him as a whole, he's got some good cold contributions. But the main man is, of course, up front. Mohamed Mohamed's already got 20 goals and he mostly comes off the bench. And he's a man ready to go ballistic. I believe we are still the best team out the two. And it'll be interesting to see how fit they are when we look at them here in a second. First thing first into tactics. We are going to move Mario into box to box. As a ball winning, he's now world class as well, but we're going to go box to box. Opposition wise, Mbappe's not fit. Casado's not fit. Um, the Bast isn't 100% fit. There's a part of me that wants to go inverted wing back and make this game get to the 70, 80th minute nil nil because I think then we overrun them. But I don't want to sit there and allow PSG on me too much, especially at home. So we will go aggressive. However, if this goes like the first leg and this goes deep into the game, if this goes to extra time, we're going to have the fresher legs out the two, I believe. Uh, into this we go. We're obviously going to go and never press the two wide players here as well. Um, Lottie Dingjam well, didn't start in the first leg. If he did, I didn't. Mi I missed him. Holy hell, he's very good. Okay, okay, come on, boys, come on. We we have to get at Tommy Ashley, as I said. We have to get at Kunde. They're both a bit old and over the hill. Here we go. The Tommy Bamford Park was built for these moments. The big Champions League fair affairs. Is it our time to finally make it through a quarterfinal? Let's go find out, boys. Let's go find out. It'll be us in our normal red PSG in the infamous blue with the red through the middle. Is it going to be Muhammad's day? Or is Mbappe hunting a fourth Champions League trophy in the save? Let's go find out, huh? Let's go find out. Early goal would be huge for us. An early goal for PSG could be detrimental. Away we go. Away we go. Early corner, Wrexham. Walter who starts... Because of the suspension. Martins. Walter. On his left foot. In the box. Cuts it. Josh Herman. Oh my god. How did you miss? World class Josh puts it past the post. How? Martins. On the ball. Back to Sayed. Back out to Martins. He can drive at people. Beats one. Away he goes. Desri do peeling wide. Holds it up. Goes back to Koulibaly. Great ball to Robinson. Needs a runner. Robinson now. Mohamed, Mohamed. Mohamed, Mohamed. Donald Rummer, what a save. What a save from Donald Rummer. Made a big save in the first leg. Makes a big save here. Corner. Do we win it? Koulibaly. Does Martins win it? Flicks down. Cleared away by Mbappe. PSG had 11 men in the box. What a start. 
Desri Du, Koulibaly out the Martins as he beat his man. No, he goes inside of Muhammad Muhammad. Big start from Wrexham. Martins now running down the right wing. Can he whip a ball in? Cuts it inside. Desri Du. Martins on the overlap. Back stick. Mr. Josh Herman. He missed the Guild Edge one five minutes ago, but he doesn't miss this one. And as it stands, we're into the Champions League semi final. It is Wrexham 1, PSG 0. Backstick ball from Martins. And it is Josh Herman. And the man from Wrexham. Well, he's actually not from Wrexham, but I think he's close from Wrexham. But the man for our intake at Wrexham has put us 1-0 up in the Champions League quarterfinal. As things stand, we're through. But I'm not going into the inverted wingback system this early. Robinson hits one from distance over the bar. I think we have to stay on the front foot. I think we have to go after him. I think we need to go and try and find a third or a fourth. PSG may have all the ball at the moment, but they're yet to have a shot. And it is a corner for Walter yet again. He's very good from these set pieces. Walter whips it. Front stick cleared away. Only as far as Martins. He can beat people. Finds Walter. Left peg. Cuts it. Josh Herman blocked. Falls to Casado. They're on the break here, PSG. Mbappe now. That's always scary to say his name. Martins sits him down. Koulibaly. Robinson. Batista. Needs to find a half a yard. Hincape can recycle. And he goes into Robertson and Sayed. Very calm and composed from Wrexham. Out right the Martins. The ball's bouncing. The Welsh fans are singing. Martins to the byline. Cuts one of the... OBS Streamlabs is the biggest piece of shit. Honestly. Alright. So that's the second leg. I need to see where that got to because it froze on me. Yeah. I've never had an issue. And then in the last week, I'm not even getting, um, not even getting this. So what's just happened here, YouTube? I am going to keep this in the episode. Is my Streamlabs has died, killed my stream. And I don't know where we got in terms of the recording. So this obviously has to be part two because that would have been the first leg. Where do we get to in this? Do we get the goal? Made a big save in the it is Rexon one over the bar. Front stick clear away. Only as far as could have come and composed from Rexon. Ah, uh, so we just missed the last highlight. In the end, the ball gets whipped in. De Desri do picks the ball up. Ah, uh, so it cuts out here. Desri do picks the ball up and then puts it wide. He picks the ball up, takes one touch, and puts it wide. That's the highlight. Okay, all good. Very weird. I don't know why. Um, it, it wasn't even this. My it, This froze. For those wondering, this just froze. So my face was frozen. The recording wouldn't let me stop recording. I had to force shut it down with Task Manager. Don't worry. It's still 1-0. We're still in the Champions League right now. We've had a very dominant first half. We may have given them the ball, but they have yet to have a shot. Away we go. Come on, the boys. Come on, the boys. Here we go. 50 minutes played. Time ticks away. I was saying that I don't want to go into the inverted wingback system with them being tired. Look at them. They're free of their front four are gone. And we're yet to give them a shot. So why would we change? Corner for Walter. Walter. Martins. Cleared away. Only as far as Batista. Sweeping up. He's got to come off at some point today. Sayed. Robinson. Driving. Back to Sayed. Ball over to Hincape. Good ball out to Walter. Touches inside to Koulibaly. Needs another midfielder to drop in here. Herman's done well, but it's going to fall to Debas, and they're going to be able to build out. Can we go on the press, maybe? Squeeze him in this quadrant, boys. Force a defensive mistake. Manuel Ugre. Ball into Messina. Look how deep the winger has to come in to pick it up. This is huge from us. Force him long. That had to be fair to PSG. That played out pretty well there. Tommy Asu now have a ball down to Mbappe. Robertson goes through him. No foul. What defending. Martins is having a weldy out here. Stands on his man. Beats him. Cuts it. Herman. It is Josh Herman. And he's finally proving he's world class. Put him out wide, boys. Don't play him up front. Put him out wide. Martins is giving Tommy Asu a bath. And Kunde is being bathed by Herman. It is 2-0. Brilliant. 70 minutes played. At what point do we move to the inverted wingback system? I actually don't think we do right now. I think 
they just had a shot, but nah, maybe we do. Maybe we go to the inverted wingback system and you try to see it out now. All right. Batiste is going to stay out here. Desiree Du is going to come off here and he's going to be on for George Davies. Davies is going to go... Davies is going to go into the box the box and Batiste is going to go in a ball-winning midfielder on support as well. And then I think we're going to go with Junior for Herman, Martins for Doak. And we're going to leave the rest. I'm going to leave Muhammad Muhammad out there, but yeah. Highlight again, 77th minute. Fresh legs of Ben Doak. Gets to the byline. It's 3-0. The best team in the world. The team that's won the Champions League, what, twice in the last three years? They are being dispatched. It is 3-0. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. It is 3-0. Unreal, lads. Unreal. That unreal. Jacob is gonna. Jacob Rams is gonna come into here, and I'm gonna bring Dedes in for Mamu Mamu. We're gonna play Ben Dyke up front. What a day, boys! What a day. We've held PSG to bugger all XG, and it's gonna finish Wrexham free. PSG nil, three nil on aggregate. And we are through to the Champions League semi-final and to more than likely pay Benfica unless there was a comeback and a half from Porto. Finished 5-10. 5-10 it finished. There we go. Your next episode, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, is going to be Benfica for the Champions League semi-final. And I don't want to write Benfica off early. But realistically, on paper right now, boys, we should be in the Champions League final after the end of next episode. With that being said, give it a like, do subscribe to the YouTube channel. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you and goodbye. Three, two, one, and let's go. Hello YouTube, Damo underscore 23 here and welcome back to another episode here on the YouTube channel. In today's video, it's the quarterfinal of the Champions League. That is correct, we are three ties away from potentially winning the whole competition and the same being over. We just need to get through a tie in the quarterfinal, home and away, a tie in the semifinal, home and away, and then the Champions League final. What I will say in that is we've never made it past the quarterfinal. We have obviously made it to the quarterfinal on a couple of occasions, but this seems to be the big stumbling block. As much of a world-class team that we have been, we have absolutely cost ourselves against AC Milan last season, and we got absolutely smacked by Barcelona a couple seasons ago. Hopefully today is different, and it all starts with the draw, which we're about to get into. But with that being said, give the episode a like. Do subscribe to the YouTube channel. It really does help promote the content out. And we have just had youth intake. We have just signed a number of players through the youth intake system, but our youth candidates are as followed. Ben Haywood, who could be as good as Jordan Shaw and has that world-class potential. Bradley Smith, another striker regen that has come through the football club. And Thomas Price as well, who looks pretty damn nutty. On top of that, you've got Rob Watts, who looks okay. And Harry Jones, who's waiting on a deal at the moment and has some really good technicals as well. What I'm trying to say is, because we have world-class facilities and we are the best team in Wales, you've got to remember, even though we're in England, it's in Wales, we get all the best Welsh regens. So my youth intake's a stack, but that's because the Wales national team, the Wales youth level, etc., is all determined by basically me and we're the best team in Wales, so we get the best of the bunch, uh, is what I'm trying to say. So we got a big pool. I'm just going to briefly just show you in the 18s now. We've got, what, one, two, three, four guys that have world-class potential. One, two more guys that have good to leading Premier League potential. And all these guys here, if they hit their potential, are good to leading Premier League players too. That's pretty special. Then if you look at the under-21 squad, if you just learned out Joe Victor, as you said, uh, Lesko, who we've already brought in, whatever, has world-class potential. Masri, James Richardson, who came through intake last year. Already looks this good and played for Australia. I'm just saying, you know, you got Zeze who's here. And the biggest one of lot is Ross Davies is yet to play for me. And he's up to three and a half star, nearly world class. And I keep buying right wingers, yet we have a Welsh right winger that I've never played. And his, men his physicals are world class. 
if this ever turned into a youth only challenge, we would be stacked right now. Anyhow, that's not the hallmark of this save because we could potentially, in three to four episodes time, be done with the save itself. But without further ado, let's get into the draw. Your teams in the draw are Barcelona, we don't want them. Benfica, we want them. Porto, we want them. Inter, we do not want them. They're very, very good. Liverpool, that will give me nightmares because they knocked me out last season the year before. PSG, we definitely do not want. And Real Madrid would be quite difficult. The only good thing is Bayern Munich are no longer here. And they're the team that have been dominant in Europe. So, at least in that regard, even though we beat them already, we don't have to face off against a team that's made four finals out of the last six seasons. First out of the hat is Benfica, a team we really want. Is it Wrexham? It's Porto, and wow, it is a Portuguese derby in the quarterfinal, and that guarantees a Portuguese side in the semi-final of the Champions League. As much as that means it's going to be a more difficult draw for us now in the quarterfinal, if you can somehow draw them as your semi-final opponent, if you make it through the quarters, you basically should be already in the final. Next out of the hat is going to be PSG. I don't particularly want to face Mbappe again. Unfortunately, we have to. It is PSG yet again in the Champions League. And boy, oh boy, that is not good for us. If you have a look at the Champions League competitions, and you go by Champions League, PSG's a side that is not good for us. PSG, we did rotate that day. Mbappe scored a hat-trick. We lost 3-1 away. PSG the year before, we did not play. The year before that, we made it to the quarterfinal this stage. PSG beat me at home 2-1 in a game by memory, if it lets me see. No, we were the better side, but it was not this world-class of a team. And then away from home, PSG slapped me at the part of the Prince. And that is not good. The only good thing about this one is, I believe, we are the, uh, we are the away side first. So it will be coming back to Wales to see how we go. Uh, this is all about drawing Benfica and Porto. Can we please? <laughs> all right, boys, here we go. The whole save could rest on this. The whole save could rest on this seeing PSG in Wrexham. Because all of a sudden, this PSG tie is all of a sudden not just a quarterfinal. It's a basically a final berth. Let's go! Let's go. In before we beat PSG and then lose to Porto or Benfica in the semi. However, 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 all of a sudden, me and PSG look at each other dead in the eye and we know the winner of this tie is more than likely going to be playing in a Champions League final. Liverpool, Real Madrid into Barcelona on the other side. Obviously, it's not going to be a guaranteed win in the final, but judging on coefficient squad stature, rankings in world football, how generally Portuguese sides go in the Champions League on football manager, they generally don't do amazing. They have one year every once every 20 seasons or so where they, they randomly win one, but that's about it. We really, really, really should look at this draw and go, if we can beat the favourites, they are the favourites. PSG are a side that's, you know, have won two of the last three, and I think lost a final in here as well. We'll recap that in a second. This is a side that I think we can have a chance against, but more importantly, it's a side that if we beat, we should be in the big dance and in the final at the end of the season.